that here the Shaykh has used the verses which mention Allah's Mashia. Now we have two things. We have Allah's Irada and we have Allah's Mashia. And we have to understand that Allah's Irada is not entirely the same as Allah's Mashia. And when we say Allah's Irada, there is a difference which will be explained shortly, inshallah ta'ala. But uh, the, 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 what, what we should understand, that when it comes to Allah's irada, when we speak of Allah's wish, so in order to make it uh, clear in English, when we say Allah's irada, we will use the word wish, Allah's wish or Allah's desire. And when we say Allah's mashi'ah, we will say Allah's will, Allah's will. Right, so to help us distinguish between the, the two things in, uh, in, in, in English. So when we speak of Allah's irada, Allah's irada is of two types. Allah's irada is of two types. Allah's irada is, uh, the first type is Allah's irada kawniyah. Al-irada al-kawniyah. This refers to everything which occurs within the creation. Everything which occurs in the creation and takes place in the creation, it occurs by way of Allah, Allah's irada, kawniyah. Meaning that Allah's, that Allah's wish that relates to the creation, that relates to everything besides Him. And so this is what we call uh, the irada al kawniyah And the other type of irada is the irada shar'iyya. Irada shar'iyya. And this is the irada, this is something that Allah wishes and desires from the servants that they fulfill and that they perform and that they abide by. Right, so we as Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, we distinguish between these two types of irada and we don't treat them to be, to be the same. If we treat them to be the same, then this will lead us to the mistake and it will lead us to the foundation of the bid'ah of the qadariya and, and the mu'tazila who spoke of the bid'ah of al qadr. Right, we distinguish between these two types of irada. Allah has an irada, which is irada kawniya, as it relates to everything in the creation, and an irada, which is shari'iya, which relates to the things which Allah requests and desires from His servants in terms of the commands and in terms of the prohibitions. So, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wishes for His servants to have iman, to have faith. He wishes for His servants. To establish the prayer. He wishes for his servants to, uh, and desires from his servants to follow and obey the messengers. He wishes and desires from his servants that they honor and respect the parents. And so on and so forth from all the other things which are, which are desired in the sharia. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not wish, he does not, you know, he does not, he does not like he does not like from the point of view of the Sharia. He does not wish from the point of view of the Sharia, the Irada that, Sharia, uh, that, that a person become a disbeliever, or that a person choose disbelief, or that a person commit shirk, or that a person fall into disobedience, or that a person commit a major sin. However, so, the, so this is Allah's Irada Sharia. However, Allah from His Irada Kawniya, He will wish and will that a person actually fall into disbelief or that a person accept iman, or that a person fall into a major sin, or that a person do a righteous deed. Right? So we, we distinguish between these two things. And so, so from one angle, we see that nothing occurs in Allah's creation, neither shirk, nor kufr, nor disobedience, nor iman, nor tawheed, nor obedience. All of, the, all of these things are exactly the same as it relates to Allah's irada kawniya. Allah's irada kawniya. Everything which takes place is exactly the same as it relates to Allah's irada kawniya. The belief of a believer, the disbelief of a disbeliever, the shirk of a mushrik, the, the, you know, the, 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 the sin of a disobedient one, the righteousness of an obedient person, all of this comes under Allah's irada kawniya. But as it relates to irada, Allah's irada shari'iyah, then, then this is this is this is separate and this is different. And Allah only wishes from His servants 
that which he has revealed to them through the, the books and the messengers of Tawheed and the, the Iman and the Sunnah and righteousness and so on and so forth. So we make a, di- a distinction between these two types of irada. But what is the difference between irada and mashia? Okay, what is the difference? And basically, when we speak of Allah's mashia, Allah's will, then it is the same as Allah's irada kawniya. Okay? These two words at this point are, can be used interchangeably. When we say al mashia, Allah wills something, then it only refers to those things which are from the, 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 the affairs which are kawniya. So this then makes it equal to Allah's irada kawniya. So irada kawniya and Allah's mashia are the same thing. So whether we say Allah wills in this case, or the, whether we say Allah wishes, right? Then really they are the same thing because they are relating to everything which takes place in the creation. But we cannot use the word mashia to refer to Allah's irada shariya. We don't say the mashia. Shariya. There's no such thing because Allah's Mashia is only used for those things which take place in the creation. Only for those things which take place in the creation. Whereas Allah's irada, Allah's wish, what Allah desires, that only re- that, that that can refer to you know things which take place, which he wills to take place, and things which he does not will to take to, you know to take place. Right? So Allah didn't wish, you know, he Allah, 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 He requested from Abu Jahl to become a believer. Right? So from his irada shari'ah, He wanted Abu Jahl to become a believer. But from his irada kawniyah, which is the same as Allah's mashia, Allah's will, He did not will that Abu Jahl should come, uh, 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 should come uh, a believer. Okay? So we, so we distinguish between these two. And so irada is not the same as Mashiach in every single respect, rather the irada kawniya is Allah's Mashiach, and as for the irada shari'ah, that is not we, we cannot speak of that in terms of Allah's will. And so this is basically what uh, <coughs> the, you know we distinguish between these two things. And so uh, after this, uh, after it become clear to us that when we speak of Allah's irada kawniya that it is the same as the Mashia, then we see uh, that there are a number of verses which speak about Allah's uh, wish. Allah says, Allahu yuridu dhulman lil ibad." That Allah does not wish for oppression upon His servants. And Allah says, "Yuridu Allahu bikum al yusr, wala yuridu bikum al usr." That Allah, that He wishes for you is. And he does not, does not wish difficulty upon you. These verses are speaking about Allah's irada shari'ya. Right? Meaning that by way of what Allah has revealed, the commands, the prohibitions, Allah does not want to burden you. Allah does not want to uh, uh, commit oppression upon you. Allah does not, want, does not want to make things hard upon you and burden you. Rather, all of this refers to Allah wishing and wanting ease and benefit for His servants. And so... Uh, uh, also we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions about uh, some of the disbelievers. He says in the verse, وَلَوْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا لَأَسْمَعَهُمْ وَلَوْ أَسْمَعَهُمْ لَتَوَلَّوْ وَهُمْ مُعْرِدُونَ Allah says that if Allah knew of any goodness in them, He would have, he would have made them to hear, I mean, made them to hear the, the guidance. But if He had made them to hear, they would have simply turned away and you know they would have turned away this shows here that that this comes back to allah's knowledge allah is speaking about a group of people and allah knows that there is no goodness in them and and so for that reason he did not cause them to hear the guidance so he did not will from his Mashiach, or from his irada kawniya, he did not will them to hear the message. He didn't will will it for it to occur. Why? Because he knew that if he had willed for them to hear the message, they wouldn't have listened anyway. They would have simply turned away. 
So this, so that what, what this proves and what this shows, this verse, is that whatever Allah wills will occur. Whatever Allah does not will, meaning with the Mashiach, will not occur. And it is also in Allah's knowledge that if he had willed something to occur with his, with his will, then he would have known what, to, what, what would have happened. Okay, and then even, even if that thing never even happened in, in, in the first place, even if he never willed it in the first place. So all of this shows that Allah's Mashia, Allah's will, which is the same as Allah's irada kawniya, which is Allah's wish tied to the affairs of the creation, then this is tied to Allah's knowledge and His wisdom. It is tied to Allah's knowledge and His wisdom. What does this mean? This goes back to the point we mentioned earlier, that for example, if Allah wills for an earthquake, or a tsunami, or some kind of calamity, or some sort of disease, or whatever it might be, then Allah has willed that thing to occur with Mashia. And Allah has wished for that thing to occur with the irada kawniya. And this is tied to Allah's ilm, his knowledge, and it is tied to his, his wisdom, hikmah. It is tied to those affairs. And we see that as for the irada shari'iya, meaning that which Allah wishes and desires from the servants that they perform, even though he might not will that they perform it, Right? So Allah wishes from you, Allah wishes from a person, like we said about Abu Jahl, for him to become a believer. Yet Allah, or Abu Lahab for example, he wished for him to become a believer. Yet Allah willed for him to never become a believer. Right? And all of this is, so Allah's will here, which is the Mashia, is tied to Allah's wisdom and his knowledge and, uh, and, 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 and his knowledge. So, uh, from this, we see that when Imam al tahawi says, "Wala yakuno illa ma yurid," wala that nothing occurs except what he wishes. What is he talking about? Which 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 irada is he speaking about? Is it irada sharia or irada kauniya? Irada kauniya. And this is speaking about irada kauniya. It refers back to the irada kauniya, and. From this we distinguish, as we said, the important point to take from this is that we distinguish between the irada shari'iya and the irada kawniya. And by not distinguishing between these two things, then we fall into the innovation and the mistakes of the people, like, like the qadariya, who could not distinguish between these two things. And they had a misunderstanding about what is the, the, the notion of justice, al-adl, as, as, as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, the second thing, the second point that the Sheikh explains here is that we can look at this thing from two points of view, from the point of view of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the point of view of uh, the servant. So it's similar to what we said before, that when Allah wills a thing, or when Allah wishes a thing with, with his irada kawniya, we see nothing but wisdom. In that action. But as for the servant, when we see a servant, we a servant has his wish as well. He has his irada, he has his mashia. And he does things according to his own mashia. Now it could be the case that it could be the case that Allah's irada shari'iya, that Allah that, that Allah's irada that when he requests something from the servant. And when he wills it from his irada kawniya, then it happens that the servant irada agrees with that. In the, in the sense that a servant, he does something which agrees with Allah's, with Allah's wisdom. And it could be the case that it does not agree with, with what Allah has willed or what Allah has, uh, has wished. To give an example, again, to the, the, this, some of this is quite technical. And the best way to really explain it is, is to give examples. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wishes from a servant to, uh, for example, uh, to, uh, let's say, to write a will, for example. And so when he writes the will, uh, there will be a certain wisdom behind that, which is that the wealth will be distributed according to his wishes, and there will be no disputes amongst the people who he leaves behind from his family. And so there's a wisdom uh, behind that. And so this is something Allah has requested 
and wished from you know from 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 you know from, from the servant and then the servant allah may will or he may wish from his irada kawniya that the servant that he, I, he that he might do this or he might he might not do this so he might write the will or he might his legacy or his will or he might write it but do it upon injustice meaning that he gives away more than one third of his wealth or that he you know leaves something from some you know someone so he basically does something which is incorrect so in this case even though Allah in Allah's action we say here that from the point of view of Allah's irada shar'iyah meaning what Allah requests and wants from the servant obviously there is wisdom because everything in the sharia there is wisdom in terms of what Allah actually willed to happen from his mashia and his irada kawniya, in fact, what actually took place, which is whether the servant did or didn't write the will according to the right way. Then whatever the case, in either of the two situations, yes he did, yes he didn't, then there is nothing but perfect wisdom in Allah's action, right? in Allah's mashia, in what Allah will to actually take place. And likewise in uh, Allah's irada kawniya. But as for the servant, if the servant agreed with, if, if the servant in his intention, in his irada, he was intending that I am going to write the will according to you know, the sharia and give everyone his due right, then here it happens, it has happened, that by way of Allah's irada kawniya, that the servant's irada and the irada of the, of the, of the sharia, it has come, come together. And if it didn't, if it didn't, if the, if the man didn't you know, write according to the sharia and he pressed somebody or whatever, then here, there is, now there is no wisdom in that man's action. The wisdom has gone from that man's action. You know? And so, so, even though in Allah's action there is still wisdom. Do you understand? So, we have to distinguish between all of these different uh, situations and uh, you know, not, not to treat them as, as the same thing. Uh, because as we said before, not making these distinctions, it will cause us to fall into the mistakes of the Qadariya. And so, uh, for this reason, the conclusion that we come to from this is that when we speak about Allah's action, then everything which takes place in His creation agrees with wisdom, with hikmah. Right? So this is the lesson that we're taking from this. Everything that He does that takes place as it relates to Allah, it is in agreement with wisdom, with hikmah. But that cannot be said about the actions of the servants. So as it relates to me and you, that when we do something, then it may or may not relate to uh, hikmah, as it relates to us and what we intend. As it relates to the fact that these are our actions. But as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is nothing but perfect wisdom. Again, to give an example, it may be the case that Allah uh, 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 establishes an evil ruler, upon the people, this ruler oppresses the people, kills them, murders them, takes their wealth, imprisons them, beats them, and so on and so forth. Right? This, this, this action by the ruler is evil. This is evil on behalf of the ruler. And nothing that the ruler does is wis- is, is, can be said to be wisdom. Uh, as it relates to his actions judged by the sharia. As it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then every single deed of that ruler all of his murder, all of his killing, all of his oppression, all of his confiscating the wealth, imprisonment and everything, all of that, then we say that in all of that there is a far-reaching wisdom. Because there is nothing in Allah's creation that is not from his wisdom. Okay? So in other words, what we're doing here is that we're trying to separate and distinguish between the actions of the servants and what can be said about them, and uh, the, 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 the irada of the servant, and likewise, the actions of Allah and the irada of Allah, which is irada shar'iyya and irada kawniya. So everything which is from Allah's irada kawniya, meaning that Allah's wish that relates to the created affairs, which is the same as Mashia, then all of that is perfect wisdom. As it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it relates to the actions of the, of the servants and their, 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 you know, their will and their wish, then we can't say the same thing, that there is wisdom in that, unless it agrees with Allah's irada shari'iyah. Unless it agrees with, with Allah's irada shari'iyah. So, uh, the conclusion here then from this is that everything that is good 
is ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that everything which takes place as it relates to Allah is goodness and wisdom. And evil is not to be ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't say that evil, that evil, you know, that, that Allah uh, performs evil or Allah does evil. This cannot be ascribed to Allah's action. Rather, we say Allah creates evil and in His action of creating evil, there is perfect wisdom and justice. That in Allah's action of creating evil, it is perfect wisdom and justice. But as for the evil, it exists only amongst his creatures and the, 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 you know, the, the, the created the beings. But as for Allah, like when Allah, as we said, in all the examples that we gave, whether a thief steals, whether a murderer he murders, whether a ruler oppresses and kills and confiscates wealth, whether a, a, a tsunami takes place or an earthquake takes place, all of these are from Allah's actions. And in Allah's actions, each of those actions are perfect wisdom and justice. But as it relates to us, then the evil is found amongst us. So the, 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 the killing of a murderer is evil, the stealing of a thief is evil, you know, and, and so on and so forth to all the other things that we, that we find, diseases and other disasters, all of that we, we treat that to be evil as it relates to us. And uh, so from this, Allah's irada is always in accordance with hikmah. This is what you should, you should be writing down as the conclusion. That Allah's irada is tied to his ilm and hikmah. Allah's irada is tied to his ilm and his wisdom. To his knowledge and his wisdom. And so, whether that is, so in, uh, in, in the sharia, what we see in Allah's sharia, all of the legislations and the commands, and all of that is perfect wisdom and, and, and justice. And likewise, in what Allah wills to occur from His irada kawniya, and what Allah what, what Allah wills to occur from His Mashiach, all of that likewise is from perfect justice. Nothing takes place except which is just and perfect perfect uh, wisdom, hikmah. All of that all of that is tied. And the Sheikh says that again, we have many other issues branching off from this discussion, like for example, uh, what is zulm, what is oppression. What is justice? Uh, what is, uh, you know, uh, there's many other things to do with disbelief taking place and sin taking place and, you know, a man and his own actions, does he create them? All of these are separate issues. But because later on in at tahawis Creed, we see that Imam At-Tahawi discusses the issues of Qadr in a bit more detail, then these issues will be dealt at the appropriate point. Uh, you know, in, in at the Creed, when we come to that, inshallah. But for now, the purpose here behind the statement, "Wala yakuno illa ma yurid," "Wala yakuno illa ma yurid," ma, ma yurid that nothing takes place except what he wishes. Then, what we need to take away from here is, first of all, everything comes under Allah's wish; nothing escapes Allah's wish. And by wish, we mean ira, Allah's irada. And Allah's irada itself is of two types. The irada shari'a and the irada kawniya. And when it comes to mashi'a, when we use the word mashi'a, then by mashi'a, we do not treat it to be exactly the same as Allah's irada from every single respect. Rather, we say that there is Allah's irada shari'a, which is what Allah wants from His servants and requests from His servants that they abide by the sharia. This is what we call irada shari'a. And then there's the irada kawniya, which relates to what actually takes place. Right? So, so it's not the case that so uh, uh, it is not the case that Allah loves everything which He wills to take place, right? So if Allah wills Abu Jahl or uh, Abu Lahab to be disbelievers and to remain disbelievers, then it does not mean that Allah loves what He wills to take place. Rather, Allah dislikes disbelief. Allah dislikes shirk. Allah dislikes a disobedience. So again. We have, to, we have to be clear about these issues that, uh, uh, that, that not everything that Allah wills from His irada kawniya or from His mashiya does He actually love. Right? So that's another issue inshallah that maybe we'll discuss as it, uh, when it comes later on. But these are some of the points that we should uh, try to uh, uh, you know, uh, associate with this particular point of Imam Tahawi. وَلَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا مَا يُرِيدُ I know that some of the issues here are quite technical. And uh, you know maybe 
difficult to grasp without you know lots of examples. But inshallah, if there's anything that's not unclear, then if you have any questions, we can we can address them inshallah ta'ala. Otherwise, as we said, this issue is dealt later on in at tahawis Creed where he where he discusses Al Qadr in more detail. So maybe those issues uh, will, will be expanded upon uh, at the relevant point, inshallah ta'ala. So if you have any questions on anything that's been said, uh, feel free to ask before we conclude. That's right, yeah, yeah, that, that's correct. So, so when we see, for example, that the kufr of Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, that is from Allah's irada kawniya, in that Allah willed it to occur, and decreed for it to occur, and so it occurred, but it is not from Allah's irada shari'ya. Right, so things which are disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we see that there is a, a departure between Allah's irada kawniya and Allah's irada shari'ya. Because Allah in his irada shari'ya wants Abu Jahl to be, uh, wanted Abu Jahl to be a, be, uh, a believer, and Abu Lahab to be a believer, and, and a kafir to be, to be a believer. Okay, but as it relates to, for example, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he became a believer, then from then there is agreement between Allah's irada kawniya and uh, uh, so in other words the two types of irada come together. So Allah's irada kawniya, Allah willed it to to, uh, to occur that Abu Bakr become a, 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 a believer, and this is also something that Allah requested sharan, meaning from from the point of view of His legislation, from the point of view of what he, what He requested from from His believing slaves. So those two things come together. So basically. In every single good deed of a believer, Allah's irada shari'ya and Allah's irada kawniya, they come together. They come together. But as for everything, everything which is disobedience and disbelief and shirk and so on and so forth, then the, 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 the two separate. So even though Allah wanted it and desired it from the point of view of the, 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 the shark, from the point of view of the legislation which He sent to uh, His creation, that he never actually, you know, even though he requested it, he never willed it to occur. Meaning he never willed it that a person abandon disbelief or become a believer or abandon disbelief and so on and so forth. So yes, that, that, that's the easy way to, to remember that in every deed of goodness, the two come together. And in every deed of disobedience, then the, 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 the two separate. The, the, the two separate. Questions? All clear? Test you on it then, yeah? <laughs> okay. So, what are, this, um, what are the two types of irada? Then? Okay, what, what is each one? Rather, Sharia is what Allah requests from the servants. He wants the servants to abide by this is Allah's irada Sharia. He wants everyone to follow the messengers and to worship him upon Tawheed and so forth. This is irada Sharia. Whether it actually takes place or not, that's Allah's irada Kawniya. Right? And in everything that Allah Allah does, there is far reaching wisdom and, and, and purpose. So as, as we saw in what Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan said, he said that Allah creates evil and creates good for a wisdom. 
And behind all of that is the, the, is to test the people, put the people to trial, right? And to separate the evil from the good and to reward the good and to punish the, 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 the evildoers. So, so, all, so all of this really is kind of uh, tied together, really. Uh, you have to get the com- complete picture by tying all of these issues together. Uh, and it comes back down to Allah not creating the creation, you know, without any purpose. Allah created for a wisdom, for a reason. And so he sent messengers and books which explain his irada shari'iyya, right? which explain to the servants what's required from them and what they ought to do and how they ought to behave and how they ought to worship Allah alone. This is what Allah wants from them. And but from Allah's irada kawniya, then, what, meaning in terms of what Allah wills to happen in the creation, then that, that in that there is perfect, complete wisdom uh, uh, you know, through which, through which Allah, as, as we said, tests the people and separates the evil from the good and the, 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 the and so on and so forth. So for that reason, not everyone is a believer. If Allah willed, everyone would have been a believer, but He never willed. And what's the reason for that? There's, there's a far-reaching wisdom and a purpose behind that, which is what? Which is to raise the believers and to lower the, the, the disbelievers and to you know to reward the righteous and to punish the the, the sinful. Because that's the that's the that's the the, 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 the far reaching wisdom behind Allah's creating the, the, the creation. So these affairs that take place amongst the creation of the, what we seem to be evil, what appears to be us to be evil, and Allah willing it to occur, like the disbelief of a disbeliever and the sin of of, of, of a believer, all of that there is there is a wisdom and a reason behind that which all leads to, as we said. Uh, this 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 great goal or this great objective, which is to test and to put the people to trial, and to put some into paradise and to put some into hellfire, and you know uh, which Allah had already de- decreed when He took you know the souls of the son of Adam from from Adam and decreed a portion for the hellfire and decreed a, decreed a portion for, for you know for paradise. So. Yeah, everyone. Everyone has full choice. No one feels compelled to do anything, right? And this we know, and we, you know, this argument against uh, al qadr is really futile. And the best way to argue against, you know, people who 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 make this claim is is really to give like two examples. And this this is no one. This is something that no one can really deny. The first example that you give is that if you had if you had two routes or two two journeys to arrive at a certain destination and on the first route if you went that way you have highway robbers uh, there's no stops um, it's long it's uh, uh, windy it's rocky it's, it's this and that whatever and, and you know that's one way you can choose and the second way if you chose the second route you find that it's the shortest route people are nice there are stops on the way there is this and you know Every person knows that he will be free to choose one or the other. These are choices that come to you every day in your life. And no one at any time feels that he has ever been forced to make a choice. Right? Everyone always chooses that which is going to be what, what they perceive to be good for them, what they perceive, and, and keep away from what they perceive to be evil from them. And so the idea of choice, everyone feels and knows that they have that they have choice. No one can, not even a disbeliever can deny that they have complete perfect choice in, in, in what they choose and what they do. That's the first thing. The second thing is that if someone, <coughs> if someone argued from the point of view of justice and oppression, then you could go to them and, and uh, uh, you know, slap them in the face, uh, put a, a, a rock through the windscreen, pour acid over the, the, the bonnet, um, you know, burn burn their lawn, uh, kill their dog. Not that I'm saying that you do that, but I'm just give, giving an, an example. And then you could do all sorts of oppression to them and say, uh, Allah decreed, you know, Allah decreed for me to do that from Allah's qadr. I was compelled. So there's no notion of justice and, and oppression, right? So you can't you can't say nothing to me. You should just be happy with it, right? And of, of course, no one is going to really accept that line of reasoning. Not even a disbeliever is going to accept that line of reasoning. No one's going to accept that line of reasoning. Rather, he he will know that there is an idea of justice present, which everyone, because, because this idea of justice, al-adl, and a notion of oppression, is something that's from the fitrah. 
There are some things which are from the fitra. From the fitra is, from the from the fitra is everybody knows that everything which is originated has an originator, right? This is something that any, everyone's fitra will immediately recognize. This is from the things that Allah has put within a soul and within 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 within, within, within the creation in their fitra. That everyone knows that you know if 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 a glass fell on the floor, it didn't fall on the floor by itself. Now it, and if a glass is found on the table, it didn't find it didn't come there by itself. Some some someone put it there, right? So every originated thing has an originator. Also from the things is that every soul knows it has inherently the notion of justice on oppression. Right? So if someone just walk if someone if you just walked up to somebody on the street and just punched him in the face for no reason, then everyone who sees this because they are upon, they still have aspects of the fitra um, within them. They will know that this is injustice. This is this is wrong. That's why even the atheist, because that you still see aspects of the fitra coming through in an atheist, even right. He will know that justice, uh, uh, that injustice is injustice. He will he will know that, right. But what we see with the atheist is that he tries to cover and bury that fitra. Okay, so but even though sometimes that fitra will will come through and it will manifest itself in his in his behavior in in his speech. So, so even this idea of uh, knowing something to be an injustice, then this is this is as we said in the fitra of, of of all people. And so, when you use this argument against even a non-Muslim or an atheist about this idea of of, of justice and that that there has to be responsibility for, for for people in the actions, it's something that they can't deny. You know, so, otherwise, you give them that example that you know, uh, if I slapped you and you know. Uh, did this and did that, the other, whatever, and damage your property and whatever. Then, you know, there's no, no, you know, there's no such thing as justice. So how can you hold me responsible? You know, so you have no. So obviously that, that that's what we call an argument for morality. So from your choice, uh, something that Allah will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you chose to do the action, yeah. but you are within Allah's complete Mashiach. power and control and mashia. Nothing you do, it comes outside of Allah's Mashiach. But Allah, in willing you to do that thing, there is a perfect wisdom in Allah's action, in willing you to do. So in, in the atheist being an atheist, right? Even though the atheist has chosen to be an atheist, right? Even though the, the proof is established against him by way of his fitra, and by way of the messengers and books being revealed, right? So the hujjah is established upon him, right? And he's chosen his path. Right, so so it's perfect wisdom and justice that he enter the fire, so he can't argue from the angle, right? And as, as we said, he can't argue the, the, against the idea of justice either, and oppression either, because inherently he knows the idea of justice and injustice is real and true, by way of the example that I've given to you. That if you slap him in the face, you know, break his leg, you know, uh, kidnap his cat or whatever else you want to do, and tell him that you've got no right. To invoke any idea of justice or injustice, right? Because th- th- this is hypocrisy on your behalf, right? Because you know where do you get your idea of justice from and injustice from? There is there is there is nothing, you know. So 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 he has to accept that there's an idea of justice and injustice, right? So that is and so when it comes to Allah willing disbelief upon a person or Allah willing sin upon a person, right? The person has complete choice to do that. A person is completely free to go and steal, to murder, to rape, to whatever, to you know, to perform his obligations. Not perform his obligations. No one feels compelled to do anything, right? A person doesn't say when he, when he, for example, enjoys his food, or oh, I was compelled to eat the food. He knows he desired and willed and wished to eat that food. He know he knows he chose and wanted to eat that food. So when it comes to the good things, you know, he 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 will readily accept. That yes, I willed and I wished and you know I have a desire and I wanted to. So when it comes to good things, obviously now there is a will and a wish, and he knows that he's got the choice, and he feels and he knows he's got the choice to do that. When it comes to the evil he performs and creates, ah uh, well, Allah, you know Allah, Allah forced me to do this. Allah wished to do this. Allah, you know. So we can see the hypocrisy as well that in this argument there is, there is a lot of hypocrisy, uh, and really people follow the desires, whether they are sinful Muslims or whether they are. Atheists and, and, and disbelievers who try to invoke this idea of uh, justice and injustice. So basically, what we say is that in uh, in in every single thing that Allah does, like what Imam Tahawi said, "Wala yakuno illa ma yurid," that nothing occurs except what He wishes. So, and His wish 
in his his irada is tied to his ilm and his hikmah, his knowledge and his wisdom. And so everything, the disbelief of an atheist, the shirk of a mushrik, the kufr of a kafir, the belief of a believer, the righteousness of, righteousness of a righteous uh, a believer, all of that, there is perfect wisdom in, in everything. And so everything, the fact that one will get punished and one will get rewarded, all of that is perfect wisdom, perfect justice. is from Allah's adl. And there is no dhulm, oppression in any of that whatsoever, in any of Allah's actions. But there is dhulm, in the actions of the servants. Anyway, so inshallah, maybe you know we we, we will expand upon these issues when uh, we come to the issue of al qadr a bit later on. So with that, we uh, conclude today's lesson, inshallah, and uh, we'll continue next week with the next few statements, inshallah, ta'ala.